Welcome to Vlog Thursday number 377. And for those of you that go, hey, does Tom have wet hair or water on him? Yes, I actually, I, it was so nice outside. Well, cold, but breezy. I did jump in the hot tub and then almost lost track of time. But here I am. I was like, oh, wait, I have to get out of the hot tub now. That happens sometimes. And uh, let's see, we got people here already. Let it go, Tom. Tell us something good from UWC coming out that we should wait for. <laughs> I did get to hang out with Cody in person. It was, it's kind of strange because um, me and Cody both got a lot of people coming up to us. It was it made it really interesting. And I was so grateful, so thankful for everybody, uh, you know, that was coming up and around us. That they, It was absolutely great. So the uh, let me turn off my noises over here. There we go. So they're not coming through, but yeah, it was great meeting all the people in person. Great meeting Cody in person, uh, everything else. Absolutely a great time, but I will cover the, uh, UWC Chicago in just a moment. I want to mention though, and I'm going to throw a link in here, but I'm gonna do this again, uh, towards the end of the video as well. And we are doing a, you, another live stream tonight with a few other of my friends that I met there, uh, Tab Geeks, uh, um, Nolan. But we're, we're doing a round table, and I'm going to throw the link here. It's in the description. It's now on the screen. I've done everything I can to try to get people to know. This is the second live stream I'll be doing today. So I'm doing this one, and then we're doing another one that will be at 8 p.m. EST today. So basically... Uh, I have to end this one a little bit before eight to go over to another one. So I actually am going to have a really long live stream. It's just going to start here and move over there where we will talk more about EWC. Uh, but I'll bring up those topics, but I want to bring up one of them right now because more and more people, I don't, maybe don't understand all the time the impetus for this uh, other than people like trying the shiny new thing, but the shiny new thing can be rather hard. And, uh, one of the shiny new things that seems to be a popular topic again is messaging apps and their security, or in the case of many of the large social media companies, their lack of security, or in the case of Signal, I think really good security. Signal has been my go-to for a while. And one of the reasons why, and we'll bring this up, Signal Messenger, and share my screen. They've just added some new features and I might do an updated video because this is the feature I know was a big hang up and still continues to be a hang up for people uh, is the fact that you are still even now required to use a phone number, but they have now added the feature. So if you want to talk to someone on signal, you don't need to use the phone number. So I would be able to have a signal chat with one of you but not exchange phone numbers. We could just exchange a ID essentially that would allow us to talk to each other. This is a new feature they're rolling out. So, um, you know, keep your phone number private with signal usernames. This came out in February and it's something I've been testing, but it's also the reason I have a lot of faith in signal one, they've been transparent since the beginning Two, and this is the big, really big one about signal. They run as a foundation that can't be sold, that can't be bought. They run on donations and they run as a foundation. Many of the other companies that are out there doing this are companies. They're for-profit corporations that often have like a premium upsell. And these premium upsells lead me to question, you know, will they always be a privacy oriented form or not? Not to mention when they don't have any up offering. There's not a reason. They don't have a compelling option over Signal. I don't know why I would switch. That was a debate I was just having with people. Well, I have it frequently, but someone was pretty indignant about it today. And they, well, I'm like indignant. They just really wanted to understand why I wouldn't try this other app. I'm like, well, all of my info, InfoSec friends, all my security friends, many of my IT friends are on Signal. I use Signal every day to communicate with a lot of people with a lot of group chats. And we all like it. We all trust it. We trust that our messages are locked in and secure. Why would I switch to another company? If there's not a compelling feature that does it, not to mention, I know in real life who these people are. I can validate by their phone number if need be, you know, who they are and call them and confirm their signal messenger versus 
pseudo random person who says they're me on the other application. How do you validate identity? And if you said, okay, well, Signal now offers the ability to separate the phone number and the username, you have some of the validation, but what you don't have is a mass amount of spammers on Signal. Why not? That's because spammers work on very low margins. They have to send quantities of spam and get very little return, but that works if there's no friction for signup. Signal actually has a high bar for signup, requires a phone number, a working phone number that can receive text. Not that you can't automate it, but that does have a higher cost to it. And that's one of the reasons I think I've never had any spam issues or problems with people um, on Signal. Not to mention, I think it by default, it blocks any incoming messages from unknowns. I think that's still a default in Signal. So kind of just wanted to throw that out there and, you know, let me know in a message if you want me to see it, do an updated uh, review of Signal, if you will. So I've been using it for years and the newest features they have here, I mean, absolutely like where they're going with it, like what they're doing with it. They're at just the proper level of transparency, I think, for a company of how everything works. And uh, yeah, it's been interesting. And the fact that they, I think they've given reports of how they deal with subpoenas for information, which are like, here's your empty subpoena because we have no information. Here's a subpoena that you said, I would like, you know, the information from these users. We don't have it. We, the, the security is end to end and proper, well vetted, well documented end to end encryption, which is why I like Signal. You know, even I see some people in here that I know I talk to on Signal. So uh, that's kind of my little rant I wanted to throw at the beginning of this for, you know, secure messengers. There seems to be more people trying to do it and they always compare themselves or tell me they're better than Signal, but I'm like, how? What's the compelling feature that makes you better? And yeah, that's usually where the conversation people try. Well, well, I don't have to have a phone number is almost every time. And I'm like, that's usually the reason I like Signal. Matter of fact, I, I'm I'm still skeptical on this whole uh, username part, but because all my friends, I know by phone number and that's how I validate who they are. But hey, nonetheless, I get it. This is enough feature requested that people want to use it. Now, what went on at the Ubiquity World Conference besides me meeting many, many people in person? And uh, what did I get? Oh. Um, I do have um, a U7 Pro they gave me, so I got that. Oh, I didn't install it yet, so I have. I didn't install it yet, so I really don't have much to say about it. I, you know, I didn't. In, I didn't even open the box yet. So, is that even available? Let's go to the, the Ubiquity site. Nope, that's not the site I wanted. How did I type that? All right. Now, the good news is with Ubiquity, they I, I will respect their wishes to keep things private, if you will, uh, about um, the new things they're coming out with that are not released yet. But what I can in general talk about, and hey, hey, look, some of this stuff is, you know, on here. Uh, let me see. What was on here that you did talk about? Do they have any of the ones... You know, without going into details to violate any of the rules, they're, they're coming out with updated, better switches, more updates to the firewall, which is exactly what I've been asking for. They've come a long way, which is awesome in terms of how their firewalls work. And their roadmap looks good. I like the features they're offering. But there's, there's a double-edged sword here, of course. With Unify offering those new features, how are they going to put them into practice. That's the part that even if I were to tell you what they said, which I'm not, like I said, they, they teased us with some of the future things. But then again, even when they had the EA store, all of us were signed up for that EA store and were teased those future things that some didn't make it or the version that made it to production wasn't near what we were hoping. And that's kind of why I get it. They don't want people, you know, uh, false hoping their way out there. But I will say one thing I asked specifically during the CEO Q&A that is public information as far as I'm concerned, because it's not a future thing. But I said, hey, will we be able to keep the self-hosted controller? And Rob Pereira answered directly, yes, the self-hosted controller is not on an end of life roadmap. It is something they are going to continue with, which I said, awesome. I was asking that, I know, on behalf of many, many people who have concerns about that particular topic because 
the self-hosted controller is really important to many of us who do not use or do not want to use a unified dream machine or one of the variations of their system. And we want to self-host it ourselves to manage lots of infrastructure. And uh, that is, you know, one of those things like I have uh, asked that question. What else did I ask? There's a few other questions, but they were kind of evasive on, on a few of them about how the future looked on one in particular for some features that were coming out in the firewall, which also means when you're evasive on a question, I'm not the only one who asked it. Several people ask questions about, you know, what's it look like for that? And it was like no clear answer, which, of course, means there's no point in talking about it because it may never come out. And <laughs> I hate to be vague, but that's how I felt about some of the stuff going. I was excited. What I did like, though, the, the really good highlights are the people, the conversations, and the conversations with the Ubiquity people. I thought they were great. One of the things they did talking about their updated Wi-Fi and the enhancements they're working on was density, density, density. That was amazing because we even joked. I talked to uh, um, one of the Ubiquity people there that I thought, I, I thanked him right away. I was like, your presentation was great. Thank you for understanding the business problem, the business use case problem we run into. Home users, clamor for uh people to do speed testing <coughs> they're like <laughs> speed test speed <coughs> speed test speed test speed test everyone's a wi-fi speed test give me the fastest wi-fi which is not the business use case matter of fact the business use case almost always is density 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 how many users and what kind of airtime will those users have? What kind of performance will the large quantity of users have? And they give a, they give a demo at the stadium, which of course, as we know, uh, it's the, I believe Memphis Grizzly Stadium is all run by Unify Equipment and that's a high density environment and it works quite well. They talked about how they set it up, how they tuned it, awesome. And I've done a lot of these large scale installs. I know properly set up, you can scale out and have the Unify system work very, very well. And those are things that they did during the presentation. They're working on making that even better, which was awesome. And I was like, hey, that was uh, that was the kind of things I wanted to hear from Ubiquity. So they sold me a lot of confidence that their Wi-Fi line is getting better and a lot of enhancements. And a lot of it was about density. You know, the, the firewall stuff I'm happy about. It was all like, hey, we're coming out with... Uh, you know, newer updated versions of these firewalls. So the roadmap is on there. And I will say, well, let's talk about what was missing completely from there. You know, we, we got updates for the uh, UNVR. We've seen some of these updates and there's still more tuning for the updates they have, like the uh, facial recognition. They have more features coming for that. Awesome. That's a good roadmap to see. But as some, I don't use the talk system at all. And that is not something they talked about. I, unless I'm missing something, I don't recall them bringing up anything new about talk. So I'm not saying that the product isn't getting some love here or there or what the support looks like, but it's one of the things that people, when the first gen of talk came out and then the second gen came out and they dropped the old one, this can be a problem because phones are a long time install and long time support. So if you sell one of these systems to a client, you want to know that this product is going to be supported for a number of years out there. So that is a, uh, a big concern. Um, I liked your question about SSL search. It <laughs> didn't even cross my mind. Yeah, that's a big thing is um, how they're going to handle any of that. So, yes, definitely a concern. Uh, yeah, there's nothing about that. Uh, this was at there, there's nothing that they mentioned. Um, so we can talk about a negative here, like things they didn't tell us. I don't see any way to self host those other apps. I don't not that was not mentioned. Uh, I believe it was brought up. Well, some of the, a specific aspect that you get with the self-hosted apps was brought up that you don't get or with you get with the uh, built into the UDM versus that. But yeah, essentially, I don't think there's any roadmap at all that they declared uh, where you were going to be able to do anything other than host just the one component, which is the Unify um, controller. I was shocked they didn't speak about talk at all. Okay, you confirmed it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've even seen um, that. So yeah, I 
I didn't hear him talk about it at all. Cody was there. So yeah, definitely an issue where that was kind of omitted. So I don't know where that was. Uh, obviously, and I don't, I don't recall. I feel like someone asked a question about it, but I don't remember. Um, but I don't remember any updates at all. Certainly not in the slides regarding the edge line. So I think we can feel confident in saying that's probably dead. Because uh, people ask me about that every now and then. Like, I see it in the comments because I have old videos I did on the edge equipment. And I'm like, I don't think it really gets any love anymore. I think it's just kind of, you know, fading away into the background and kind of, yeah, that's where it's at. Overall, though, one of the things I'm really hoping is that Ubiquity does a uh, follow-up event, like, next year and every year after. I think it hopefully showed them that, you know, they have a strong, interested user base that would like to continue engaging at a, you know, deeper level with the ubiquity people having conversations. Also, we liked getting together around a common product. I mean, this is not something that's too off base that other companies don't do. Cisco live is coming up. Cisco has their events. There's other, there's plenty of other software and hardware vendors that have their meetup events that bring the community together to talk about the product, engage with the people that make the products. And I, I just think that's a great way to do things. Um, uh, one thing they kept straying away from was support before uh, support versus now. Yeah. I mean, that is, you know, they're, they're still increasing the level of support they're offering. So that is kind of something, you know, they're getting better at and they continue there. They showed a strong commitment to keep enhancing their support, which once again, that's great. That's, that's the kind of things we want to hear is that they're going to keep moving that forward and keep offering better support options. Um, uh, side note and kind of side joke here. I like when people call me for support and hire me. <laughs> um, we'll have to see how it plays out. I'm not worried. Ubiquity does not make up the, um, it makes up a small percentage of the consulting we do, uh, but it is, you know, it is there. It is something we consult on frequently enough, um, but it's not the larger percentage of what we consult on. Yeah, the, um, they, they, they have new product releases, but they did ask us not to talk about them. So I'll skip talking directly. My understanding is we're, we weren't supposed to take any pictures of new product releases. They had them out there, um, but they're coming out soon enough. They have, Most of the releases they talked about are supposed to be out later this year. Uh, I, I, I know a lot more people besides me because I talked to a lot of them and I've been emailing back and forth with many of the people that I met. Um, they're, you know, yeah. I'm just not big yet on these. One of the big features that we all know is coming. This is not a secret. And they talked about it being here soon again, but soon is not a time. I didn't have an exact date when this feature will be available, but it's when they get their uh, high availability set up. That's the part that it matters quite a bit. Uh, being able to easily swap um, over from one to a failed mode to the other. They have their shadow mode now, but Shadow mode doesn't exactly solve it. So uh, those are not easy to implement. So I know there is a lot of engineering going on that. But hey, that's just one of those things that hopefully they, you know, get working sooner than later. Um, the camera systems, you know, I should I need to take a closer look at their camera system. They do. They're finally getting these a lot better, but I can talk about a negative again. Uh, I still did not hear anything and Cody chime in. If you're still here, if you have information, I don't, or can share information, or maybe we'll be talking about it on a later, uh, event, which I can't remember if you said you were coming or not, Cody, but I don't remember seeing anything about being able to offload the data, like to a NAS or something like that, like point it at a share. I don't, that's, there's unofficial ways to get the data off of your Unify and VR, but there's not any official ways. And that's still disappointing. That's, that's not a feature uh, because it's not, it's a pretty common ask for people to be able to have a lot of storage and, you know, point it at a share, point it at an NFS or SMB share and push all the data that way. Uh. No, there's not, they're not going to offer a virtualized version of, I can't imagine ever them offering a virtualized version of their uh, firewall plus why I don't think I would ever want a virtualized version of them. 
Yeah, only seeing them, uh, ability to export. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things, like when you look at NVRs, this is a common request. Offload, because people need extensive amounts of data. Synology does a good job of this, and so do many other uh, NVRs. I just happen to work a lot more in the Synology ecosystem, but you can buy a Synology and offload all the data to another Synology or you know, keep easily expanding your Synology to a very large system to be able to manage all that data. But uh, I would hope they do some more MSP stuff in the Dream Machines, like customers, like uh, sites and stuff. Host their setup general Wi-Fi for custom and all sites in one place. Yeah, they, I don't know um, that they said, that would be really cool because that was another question that I did not get a chance to ask. I would like to know their roadmap for their API and could we start integrating with other tooling? You know, as a managed service provider, being able to have more data streamed via API tied into more things to get data on clients would be kind of cool. But, you know, I don't, I don't think that's on a roadmap at all. Are you using an identity solution? No, I do not use any of the, uh, at, you know, at my company and or myself, I'm not using any of their identity management stuff. I, once again, identity management is one of those things that I, I find it almost weird they're getting into it. It seems like a great idea, I guess. It's like, hey, let's do full identity management. But until you really smoothly integrate into everything, like with Active Directory and Azure, because that's where most of our clients at, we have a large amount of clients that are using things that are related to Microsoft for identity management. We have a lot of them that are using Google for identity management. Those are your two biggest ones out there. I think we have some people in between. I I, I don't know for absolute certain because they're not people I manage. But I think we have some that are using Okta and Jump Cloud um, for identity, but it's not something that, you know, I, I I wouldn't sit down like for example, and this goes not just this is not just picking on ubiquity. People ask me about using identity management with Synology, and I'm like, no, I, I don't know how well integrated it is or if it integrates, and it's it's a lot to trust identity management to a company. <laughs> Who needs a dedicated fire, dedicated firewall when you get Windows? Yeah. Yes, I definitely was asking the hard questions. I'm not afraid of those at all. That's for sure. Because um, that's one of those things that are important is it's a nerd crowd, by the way. If you didn't know, many of the people there were very technical. So I jumped right on very technical questions because that's what matters. Not the here's what the product does. Get excited. No, I want to know how the product does it. When the rubber meets the road, as they may say, when the product gets deployed, how do I actually manage it? How will the packets pass through it? Those are the details that really, really matter because that is the deciding factor when I set something up is how that's done. <laughs> I wish they would have had kept their solar products. Yeah, that is kind of a, like sometimes they go a little bit too wide. And when they do that, um, yeah, if you go too wide as a company, you kind of lose focus. And I think that can be what they did. Because solar, like I get going into other business, small business, especially use cases, but solar is not a small business use case. Um, but technically lighting was a use case, but they also got rid of the lighting system, which I thought was weird. So uh, no new announcements on solar or lighting. And I believe those products are all dead. Have I looked at PFSense 2403? Uh, yes. Yes. That is uh, something that I um, I will be, I haven't had time to do the video on it, but I want to, because I think the 24, I was, I, I wanted to do a video before it was released, but I'll probably just wait till the release because the release is right around the corner here. Um, I feel for it. So it's in release Canada right now, but 2403 is awesome. It's a really good update, especially for people like myself who manage a bunch of remote PF senses. Yeah, they do integrate into Azure and Google Workspace, but still lacking a lot of rules for uh, network access for being using. It. Yeah, it's it's a it's not a thorough integration, I guess you could say. Uh, nowadays, it's easy to uh, crack Wi-Fi passwords. What we downside of using AD verification centralized? I wouldn't say it's easy to crack Wi-Fi passwords. Um, it's 
if you have a sufficiently long password, it's expensive to crack a Wi-Fi password. Uh, you know, you can rent a machine at AWS to do it, but will you know? Will you come sniff enough handshakes to gather the data you need, upload it? You know, or assuming maybe you have one of these hundred thousand dollars servers that can crack it over so many hours. You know, do you rent it? Uh, actually, just look that up right now. Current cost to crack Wi-Fi password. What is the current cost of that? Someone had it listed really good. That's not it. Um, oh, man, where is... Someone had it broke down. I thought it was cool. I don't know where the site is anymore. You can do it. You just have to rent a... Uh, cost to rent AWS server for crack Wi-Fi password. There used to be a site that you could do it. I can't remember if you could upload it or... Let's see. It was something like... I remember it being down to like... Five or six thousand, maybe it was a little higher than that. Depends on depends on length of the password. If you have a really long password, it's not it, it gets harder. So uh let's see. Uh could you do a video on tuning Seracot and PF Sense? I'm having trouble. I already have a video on Seracot. Well, I have one on Snort and I have one on Seracata. The one on Snort's newer. But it's the same video. The rule sets tune the same way. So if you type in Snort or Seracata, you can watch those videos. They exist already on how to tune the rules. LTT just did a video on how fast is it crack Wi-Fi passwords. Uh, way easier to pwn your network devices than cracking Wi-Fi passwords. It's not, yeah, guess what we do when we're doing security and things like that? wander around all the different reports and it's not because everyone has great wi-fi security trust me this is not why you will find a lack of attacks that occurred on businesses because someone cracked their wi-fi password <laughs> that is the reality of it uh lately i'm to the point where windows 10 is breaking a lot of ways finally started to tell people windows 11 is more stable eh. It probably is. I don't know. I haven't run Windows in so long. Microsoft still beta tests on all the people. Yeah, and this is true. You can go uh, WPAP, WPA3, EAP, TLS. Uh, I'm sure my math is really, I can't imagine what uh, this can do. Yeah, they. it's not as easy. It, people always start to say it's easy, but anytime someone shows a demo, they're like, here, let's use the smallest password possible versus, you know, a really long password to properly secure things. And one of the other things that people may not realize or are not doing, where's the thing here? Where's my pull mine up? So I know the password for, this is my, yeah, let my friends over. This is a human readable password or I should say human sayable uh, password. I can tell people that want to come over my house. The beer network is my, you know, if friends want to be on it network, but it's not my only network because the other one I have, this one has a ridiculously long randomly generated password that is going to be extremely hard to crack because I forget how long it is, but it's, it's completely random gibberish, super long uh, one. This is my secure network. And by the way, being on that network would be boring to you because the machines, you, if you work under the, the threat model or the, the mindset, I should say, of assume breach, then if you're working in assume breach, being on my network, even if you went and plugged into it, 
you wouldn't find a bunch of open shares and open services to just start connecting to. You then have to, once inside my network, figure out the next thing that isn't patched, that's accessible on that network. Being on the network doesn't get you as far as you think, provided you set the network up properly. Um, not to mention, if you try to DHCP out of my network, I get a notice that a new device has entered the private network, which is something I will scratch my head about going, why did a device suddenly get on a network it shouldn't be on and go from there? So yes, that's uh, just, yeah. The One of the things that people um, don't always think about is that it's generally more challenging, but it's also not where the attacks are occurring. Uh, most people doing the attacks are overseas, which puts them out of range of your Wi-Fi. It's not it's not the way that they uh, do things. Yeah, if, if you're just doing phrase passwords like Apple123 and Monkey123, which are both uh, Monkey123, I think for a long time was common, finally subs, you know, finally replaced by Monkey1234. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you're using really um, basic phrases, uh, you know, winter monkey or summer monkey and all those. And that's usually, if you want to know why there's so many seasonal passwords, seasonal passwords are because people who set 90 day password expirations, um, people just keep reusing the same password, but they put the season spring, summer, fall, winter. <laughs> Uh, 2FA for DHCP service sounds interesting. Whenever you get a device request for an IP, you get a ping and a phone to approve MAC address. I'm, I don't think that's, that sounds too tedious to me. Uh, just pick and organize who you want on there. Bold to assume my Wi-Fi does not reach overseas. True. Yeah. Yeah, this is like I said, this is one of those. Uh, I worked at a bank where we paid for a pen test, they got in literally because of fall 2020. Yes, all that's weak passwords on service accounts and things like that. That's your danger. You know, I've watched people spend way too much time overthinking their Wi Fi security, and I'm like, someone's sitting in a parking lot hacking you guys. And by the way, what's on your network that getting in, my, getting in over Wi Fi gets me to where I need to be? You know, one of the things that for example, I have a server network that is very locked down where I host the servers. That's not routable to any Wi-Fi. So if you're on the Wi-Fi, you don't get to be on it. And, you you know, for example, a lot of things we do, you do off of a jump box or what they may call a bastion server. So you have to connect to the bastion server and the bastion server is there. Well, the bastion server only accepts keyed authentication. So unless you know how to bypass SSH keyed authentication, and to my knowledge, there are no known flaws in that right now. Being on my network, you'd have to then find my Bastion server, be authorized somehow to figure out what IPs are allowed to get on it, be one of those IPs that lets you get to it, then figure out a way to crack SSH keys. Um, yeah, it's SSH key authentication on that. So you got to be able to get around that. Uh, when we were learning about passwords in the class, that's quarter tested, I testing to hear you go in depth about them. Uh, the best password security is not to know the password and let a tool generate it. Yeah. I use a password manager for all that. You know, I don't really know my passwords. I know my password manager's password. And then from there it fills in gibberish for all my different sites yeah so uh what else was i going to talk about today i mean, I mean it's kind of fun just kind of going back to the ubiquity topic it is kind of fun though to see all the things they've come out with and stuff they're doing they are substantially better company now. And I think it's great because one of the things that I'm impressed with that they've done is keep to their guns, so to speak, keep to the ethos that we're not going to start licensing and 
they could, they could do like a pivot right now and say, all right, you get the basic features, but you got to buy a subscription for advanced features and everything else. Like they could, they would, they're the only company not doing that right now. So um, I'm, am impressed that that is still something they've held on to since day one. And that is, that's something to be said because they are, they are standing alone in that. That is one of those things that I'm impressed with that they have not changed their attitude on. It is, uh, it is definitely one of those things that I'm just like, yeah, how you guys have made it further than most companies without turning into a subscription model for everything. And uh, they, they said they want to continue being that. And I was like, that, that part makes me really happy. That is a, uh, that they have not changed from that model. Two thumbs up to that. That was reiterated. That is part of their vision for things. And I'm like, I'm here for it. I'm here for a company not trying to turn every damn thing into a subscription, even when it doesn't need to be. And then not doing a good job of it. I, I Technically, and someone can will probably call me out on this if I don't bring it up, Aruba, with their basic instant on stuff that I covered years ago, which, by the way, I haven't logged into the interface. I should I should log into the Aruba Instant On portal. Aruba said they weren't going to charge for Instant On. And to my knowledge, and unless they have, and I didn't see this, um, they, aren't, they still aren't charging for the Aruba Instant On dashboard. Let me pull that up. What is, I should remember the site for it. I haven't logged into my Aruba account in so long. Does my Aruba account still exist? Let's find out. Well, fun. Uh, I can't share because it's got my email address on there. But I am laughing because it looks exactly the same as it did. This the it, it good news. Watch my video I did from like five years ago. It looks the same. <laughs> so Aruba still exists. Um, Aruba still has a site that looks like it did five years ago. It doesn't really look like they changed much on it. So good news, they are still offering their service. Bad news is it doesn't. Last time I um, see. Access point last time was on was three years ago. So womp womp. I still have it. It's in a box. I should turn it on and see if it updates. <laughs> Aruba is reaching out. You know, the problem I have with Aruba is they told me they were going to have all kinds of updates. Um, they didn't. It's still, they, I mean, they did add, I think a year I, the, I did, hold on. How old is the last Aruba video Tom did? So when did I review that? Uh, three years ago, I reviewed the Aruba. And they promised, they were like, oh yeah, we're definitely going to be um, published date on this. Thanks, YouTube. Maybe, where the hell did YouTube hide that? Edit video. I think you can only see the date if I hit edit video because it will give me the exact date. I'm just looking for the exact date I made it. Or maybe not. Anyways. the um, So I did this a little over three. I know it's been a little over three years. I did it. But they said, oh, yeah, we're going to have a bunch of updates. They had a minor update where they added uh, some VLAN support. That's it. And it still looks the same today as it does three years later. It's like, well, improve your portal is kind of my answer. And they really haven't. Um, you wish they would let us add third-party IP cameras to the recordability of Protect. Yeah, that would be nice. It, it, kind of a pipe dream, no. Aruba instant on equals power on in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, looking at 360 cameras for different brands, do you have any suggestions for good models that have IR and B? No, I haven't really done a lot of reviews on the 360 cameras, so I'm not sure which ones are the best uh, to use for that right there. Uh, we implemented a password rule such that a password was longer than 24 characters. You no longer have to change it. That's actually a clever, a clever rule. 
Um, I put Aruba Instant in a car dealership two hours ago. Other than updates and changes, we never touched them. Uh, just swapped out for Unify last year. I got to admit, the like the Switch, I took it out of the Instant On portal. It's been using as a standalone. As a Switch, I think they're great. Very workable. Well, it's... Yeah, there's certainly techs who complain if they keep changing things, but I'm not asking for change for the sake of change. I'm asking for like more features that the switches are actually very, the, the, the exact problem with Aruba. The reason people take them out of the instant on mode where they have only basic features, because if you want to use the advanced features, the switches are actually really advanced. They have all kinds of features. You just can't use them if you tie them to the portal. The portal turns off all the features. So it's like, Here's a switch with, here's the, all the features on the switch list. Like here's our sales sheet for the switch. And you're like, that's great. I love that all those features are built into your switch. Can I use them? Well, not if you tie it to the portal. Well, wait a minute here. That's like one of those little caveats you really should tell people. Because here's here's a car with all the features you want. Um, but the moment you actually drive it on a road, all those features turn off. You're like, well, wait a minute here. I, I, I kind of need to drive it on a road because that's where it's most useful. But it's but you take it off the road, it'll have all the features. <laughs> that's how I feel about Aruba. Um, you talk about subscription. I made me think about Broadcom VMware, new model, what we suggest people move to uh, from VMware to Proxbox XCP and using Veeam. Um, I'm big on XCPNG. That's been my go-to. I really like XCPNG. I think it's a solid product. I don't understand, and I'm still waiting. I'm having some internal debates because I don't understand, with the exception of, the exception going to be, we'll start with, yes, Veeam does application-aware backups, and XCPNG does not do application-aware backups. Throw the Veeam agent on those VMs. But I would rather use, and to me, this is a total cost of ownership saving. Why not use the backups in XCPNG to backup client systems? That seems very logical to me because I'm already going to be paying for the Zen Orchestra. Why not include all the backups with it rather than rely on a third-party solution that has fees? It's not like Veeam's free, so I don't use it. I mean, we do at CWR, but I'm just saying like that's a solution we've sold to a lot of clients. Now, granted, it doesn't have uh, the same multi-tenancy management. So Veeam is MSP channel partner friendly, and that is currently a lacking feature. So when you're managing a lot of the backups, but, you know, there, there are trade-offs still on it. Yeah, their biggest ESXi and vCenter. That's because if you're if you do ask, I assume when people ask about switching to Proxmox and XGPNG, they're talking about ESXi vCenter. If you're talking about VMware Horizon, sorry, there's not a drop in replacement from anyone that really not especially not in the open source space. Uh, that's a drop in replacement for uh, VMware Horizon. I will say. Um, Access cameras are expensive, but the quality is there. I, I would trust an access camera to be a good product. Uh, totally agree. I work on a cloud platform and switches have the same complaints. It only supports about 50% of the features possible. Yeah. The only thing stopping you from ditching Veeam completely is application aware backups. Yep. Uh, we did switch out about 60 Aruba, 2350 switches, Unified 24 Pro switches. Uh, everything's been working very well. Uh, one of the biggest savings of XCPD is a built-in backup, uh, not having to use Veeam. I'm, uh, my renew for Veeam is almost as much as VMware. Right. That's the thing. Veeam's not free. So using this to save yourself money makes a lot of sense. Uh, just knowing Veeam will signal to commit the SQL exchange to debit transactions log with uh, writing and scheduling scripts. Here's the thing. You shouldn't be running exchange anymore. That is not a defensible product anymore. I mean, hopefully you have it firewalled off because Microsoft does not care about the security of exchange. It is an afterthought. 
Someone will find more flaws in Exchange. Microsoft will shrug their shoulders, get around to it when they feel like it, and then do a really half-assed job of implementing a security patch for it. Because uh, Microsoft's answer is, what are you going to use, another product? Oh, there is another product. You can move it to our cloud and move to subscription. That's how Microsoft feels about you, Exchange users. They don't care about you anymore. They have they have absolutely made that very clear. Exchange, you know, we'll, we'll fix it if we feel like it. And we may not even do a good job of it. Do I think the Unify updates are okay for a small home office? Kind of a loaded question. It depends on your use case. You know, one of the, one of the things that's still missing, and I do want to do an updated video because with the new um, version 24 of PFSense uh, combined with the, oh, I, I went into the wrong firewall. I was going to pull up the Unify firewall. There we go. <laughs> I was like, that is not the screen I want to see. <laughs> well, let me log into this firewall. What up, son? Uh, 10, 15 more minutes, but then I do another live stream. What's up? Okay. Anyways. So here is my uh, Unified Dream Machine. They are definitely getting better. They now have, and this is completely up to date. So they've got a lot more features. They got a better way of doing the VPN. They're still miss missing some policy routing VPN. So now a lot of it comes down to when you're doing these uh, VPN setups or anything like that is does it fit your use case? Do you have a need for high availability? What would you do if this system failed? How quickly could you get another one? You know, do you want to be able to pull something off the shelf and put it on there? Do you want to buy two of them and deal with the way they do shadow mode or their version of high availability? I think even um, before they had these updates, a lot of small businesses that go, everything's in the cloud. We don't need VPN back to the office. UDM is actually not, not a bad choice the downside of course is and I've, they've really improved this uh is when you go into the site for the hosting so you can get a dashboard with each one of them and use their cloud to do it but of course there's been some security concerns when everyone got to see everyone else's cameras people started realizing oh yeah that's that's kind of scary. And uh, so there's still some security reservations I have about the way they tie things to their cloud. And they're not unwarranted. They're not tinfoil hat. They're ubiquity. Let other people see other people's cameras. That's the kind of problem that did occur. And because the way they handle it is because they're handling the keys. That's the flaw, in my opinion. If whoever, and uh, let's go and show this. So if I go to um, let's log into my other one real quick. I always think about who has the keys. That is my um, concern all the time. Who's got the keys? And this is stuff that people really need to be concerned about is who has your keys? Also, why does it do this? I can copy and paste a password in, but sometimes it doesn't work when I don't do it like that. So let me, there we go. Like they don't, they change the way they uh, put in the 2FA. Like I have a separate 2FA app, but I can't paste in anymore. Why they, why they remove my ability to paste in my uh, two-factor code? <laughs> Oh, it worked this time. Maybe it was a browser update because this time it let me paste it in. If you type it in, it works. It just wouldn't let you paste it in. But let's go over to... Yeah, this is... Let me see if I can show this one here. I think I can show these here. Yeah, I can't get rid of this one. Um, well, anyways... I, I, I can't show the first one because it's got a couple of clients in there still. Uh, we haven't moved them out. Well, they're in the CNWR site and they're in my site. But either way, let me talk about what I just did because now I'm now I'm logged in so I can show it. So the system here that I logged into, look, I can go change all the settings. I'm logged into it. I can click the gear icon. I can see the network update. I can... Uh, you know, do any of the settings or whatever in here. And that's a problem because 
if someone, this means Ubiquity has a set of keys that allows them access to this device. Now, granted, I don't have to allow this device access to their site, but the fact that they do have a set of keys means if someone gets inside Ubiquity, they also have access to this. That is my big problem with the way their site works, their site manager. That's the security problem, in my opinion. So, yeah. <sighs> so, yes. Um, oh, yes. Unify is moving to their cloud. Is there a way to back up Active Directory automatically? The only service I don't have an alternative for. Um, back up AD automatically? I'm not sure I understand that question. Uh, what are your reservations on Proxmox KVM versus XCBG? KVM is really uh, is really easy and stable to mod. They work fundamentally different. Uh, that is something that has been brought before. Let me share a link with you, folks, because I've absolutely talked about this numerous times. I've talked about it so much. There's a in-depth forum post where. Oliver Lambert dives into this in all the esoteric details that people care about. And it's there's a link there. It's on my forums. It's Zen Server versus KVM. And or Zen versus Zen Server versus KVM versus Proxmox. It's a whole um, breakdown of what the nuanced differences between all those things are. And one of the things is the fact that Zen has better isolation than the way KVM does it. So Zen's really strong isolation, I think, is going to be a big piece of how it goes forward in terms of uh, security. Not that I'm saying there's a known vulnerability in KVM, but they run it looser than the way they run things over at Zen. Second, the reason I like more specifically XCPNG is they offer really, really big scalability with their system. I know because we have clients that have this spread across multiple data centers and thousands of virtual machines all in one interface. I have never seen myself or really spoke with one of my technical friends. I have a lot of friends that are using Proxmox. I don't have any friends with like two or 3,000 virtual machines in Proxmox. I just haven't seen it. I'm not saying it can't. I'm just saying I have not really run into it. I've not seen people show me demos of it, but I have actually worked with clients and did large VMware migrations over the Proxbox at or from you know from VMware over to XCPNG at that large scale. So that's one of the reasons I like it. Um, you know, this comes up every now and then. Um Let's find out here. Uh, do they still have any downloads for it? When was the last update? People ask about this every now and then. And I go check. It looks like they've actually updated something. Okay, they actually did release a new version. Um, someone asked. I've, I've seen this. Uh, so the Zentil server, and it looks like they actually have a new version. So um, I have no interest in using it. Do they still have, or actually, maybe it's the community edition? Download, install directly on your server desktop, full feature set. Uh, I th one of these, and I think it was their community version that they kind of gave up on. If, there's the not, there's the paid version, but where's the community edition? Development edition. How old is it? Oh, it looks like they're actually updating it finally. This project was sitting for a long time completely unupdated. So I, I don't know that I'd use it. Um, it's cool that it's getting some love. Maybe someone picked it back up. But for a while there, it, it went kind of, it felt like it kind of went dormant. Uh, th this is the question someone asked. Has anyone tried it? Uh, Easter vacation gives me four days off. Looks like I'll reinstall XCBG and demo in my techs and boss at work. I haven't explored their backup yet. Might be time. Yeah. 
Uh, do you recommend Zen Tools over XCPNG for Windows specifically? Um, they're not. I wouldn't worry about them restricting it. I I don't see any reason they would. So really, not a big deal there. I have a recent video called "Installing Windows on uh, XCPNG." So follow my guide in here, and I, I tell you where to get the drivers. They're not behind a paywall or anything like that. Uh, do you think Chernance is going to be able to deliver VDev expansion that they had scheduled in April this year? Haven't seen any product uh, deliver VDev expansion yet, but I mean, you already can do it. You just have to expand the VDev symmetrically. So that it's not that you can't, it's the easy to expand, like expand one more drive to an existing VDev, not make another symmetrical VDev. Um, I don't know. It's going to take a long time to get that to work. There's a lot of challenges in doing it. I don't know when it's going to, I don't know when it's going to ship. I won't even make speculations as to when it's going to ship. It's, it's, it's something I wouldn't mind seeing them do, but I absolutely don't want to risk any data. We primarily don't have this problem in the business world because usually companies buy it and then they run it until they or reach a life cycle end where they replace it. But I get home users that don't have the money to buy all the drives at once want an expandable system. I get the use case. Uh, I just know that there's a lot of challenges in there. So is SureNAS a solution to vCenter? Not at all. No, not even close. Um, they're not stopping updates on core, uh, but they are stopping feature updates on core. So if you said, hey, core's not getting a bunch of new features, correct. If you said they're stopping updates, no, they plan to keep it for quite a while. They've been very clear on they plan to keep it, but they're not doing a bunch of feature development. It's kind of the short answer as I understand it. Is virtualization stable in Shunas? I remember it not being, but uh, me being correct. No, I wouldn't use it in production. <laughs> If that's what you're asking, I have some uh, servers that are non-critical to me that have it, but no, I don't, I would not use it in a business environment. It, it's one of those, like they added it on to the system and it works, but it's not, it's not great. Uh, have you heard of uh, SNCC? A first dev cloud native security tool to find auto fixes, vulnerabilities, blah, 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 in your code, open source. Uh, dependencies container. Yeah, it's a, uh, they sponsor a bunch of YouTubers. I know that I, I've never used it, but I know they sponsor a bunch of YouTubers because I've, I've heard the ads for, um, I've heard their ads a few times. I, they're not one of my sponsors. Uh, thanks for responding to my post regarding TrueNAS scale art cache. I watched your video on how to set it, uh, waiting for the fix to come out of the beta. Yeah, the the um, I'm running a few machines that are running the RC and uh, release candidate one. I log into one of them. I think it works great. I've had I've had no issues with it at all. I can't I can't even find something to complain about with the uh, latest version here. And I'm using one of the, I have it on this one. I have it on non-TrueNAS hardware as well. I have it on that. This is TrueNAS hardware. And then this one is um, non-TrueNAS hardware. So uh, it works. This is, uh, it's kind of, let me zoom it in. Dragonfish 24RC1. But yeah, it, it seems to be working absolutely great. No complaints. Choose pull. We'll get that set up. Uh, thanks, Tom, for the info on Shurnas scale not being ready for production. Hey, thanks, Tom. Can you build a Shurnas with mirrored OS drives? Uh, or simpler to run single and a backup config. No, you can just run mirrors. They you can set up um it matter of fact, let's go to this one here. These are mirrors. So my boot pool is right here. There are two different drives set up as a mirror. 
So if I go to system settings and boot, boot pool status, there's my um, boot pool mirror. Yeah, there's no way to add a enclosure for third parties. It'd be too hard to support. Uh, that's why their answer is just like, you know, use uh, use our hardware. That's the solution. And the TrueNAS boxes are reasonable. Uh, TrueNAS scale as storage for Hyper-V, having issues to add machine account. Any thoughts, integration, Hyper-V? I mean, you can use iSCSI with Hyper-V, so you can use it. I've, I've got clients that have used it before. I, I'm not a big Hyper-V fan, but sure. Do you have any thoughts to share on the UNAS screen? I was really surprised that you didn't release a video like so many other uh, YouTubers. Yeah. Um, you know how many emails they sent me? They sent me so many emails asking me to review it. Um, but I, I want to, I'm going to buy one because if you review it, one, there's an implied bias Two, I won't, I, I will say whatever I want. So I prefer to buy the hardware and say what I want. My hope is, is I just want to buy one to see if it runs true NAS. That's actually, and I think that's what everyone wants to do. And I know that's not what you green wants me to do. Um, and they're not loading. I mean, they're basing it on open source, but they're not really open sourcing the underlying OS. So can you trust them for long term or to make a quality product? I don't know. Hi, Tom. Being an MSP, have you concerned with ubiquitous choice to manage your switches via the controller? It just seems odd coming from a background of managed Dell systems. Uh, why would I be concerned? I can I can manage the switches with my self-hosted controller. So I don't have any concerns because the controller that I manage my switches, I'm hosting this. So I don't know why that's a concern to me. Just seems odd coming from a background managing Dell. Yeah, I'm fine with me managing it. I'm less fine, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, maybe that's what you're referring to, when you tie, I, I don't have this. Our business controller is not tied to the site.ui.com. That's the part I'm not comfortable with because I have to rely on their security. Oh, yeah, you always forget you can reskin scale. Yes. The power supply uh, is horribly loud on the uh, Mini X. What's well, a rack mount one? So I don't think I don't think companies that build rack mounts go for quiet. That's my thought. Yeah, I'm, now I'm kind of curious just how many U Green emails I have. Now I'm going to count U G R E E N. How many times did they email me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, that's weird. Okay, I'm wrong about this. They email me one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, nine emails uh, from you, Green, uh, trying to get me to review it. I didn't reply to any any of the nine emails. Um, there's, I didn't know this. The reason I thought there were more, but I realized those are older emails. Apparently, I have an old email that there was a you, Green made headphones that I had bought. So there's a you, Green headphone uh, in this list here. Someone bought it. It's in my Amazon history. Uh, one last question on hosts with no shared storage, just local storage. Is there any merit to installing XTPG on separate separate arrays as the VM storage is on the same host, like ESXi and SD card? No, I mean, you could just install it all on the one. I, I If you're going to set it all up, I just install it on the one. I don't put it on an SD card. Well, my interest in the U Green is if I can do exactly that. Can I pull? How hard is it to pull it apart? I you can do that with with uh, a lot of QNAPs. I think I feel Wendell might have a video on this about how to load TrueNAS on a QNAP. <laughs> you got five emails before you said no. I didn't reply to them anymore. So.
Are the Ugreen still in Kickstarter? I think so. Give them credit for determination. Yeah. Uh, if you had to start a new MFC you could, and you could only keep using these three same solutions, what are the three technologies you would least want to give up? I don't know. I don't think about that anymore. I, I can't. I think we have like 30 products we use and we aren't arbitrarily choosing 30 products. We have um, 30 products we need for what we do. Eugene, I, I mean, even if it is an AliExpress, there is value in having an inexpensive purpose-built NAS box that I can load my own software on because I don't trust some third-party vendor software not to be garbage. I already know, to my knowledge, based on what's on their site, they don't use ZFS under the hood. I want the data integrity of ZFS. So if they have a box that supports you know, loading my own OS, I am very interested in it. And if the box doesn't audit, doesn't claim on their site supports it, but I can buy one and test it, I would also really be happy to learn that. In terms of batteries, you green or anchor? I've always loved all the anchor stuff. I've most of all the charging adapters I have are anchor and they work great. So I have anchor thumbs up. I've not had a problem with them. I don't know anything about the you green stuff, but I do know all the anchor stuff just works. And that is a that is the bar of happiness for me. Hey, good to meet you at UWC. I found your OBS workflow insightful. Any non NAS for you cases. Um, you'd like, I'm looking to get a custom, uh, proto case. I mean, I don't know. I think you'd asked this before and I'm not good at that answer. If you look up my Ryzen XCPNG build, there is a parts list in there. I don't hate that case, but I'm not an expert on it. Wendell from level one text reviews more cases than me. I don't think a lot about cases because the only custom builds we do are stuff internally. All the client stuff we have is like, Dell, Lenovo, et cetera. So we're not building custom cases for clients. So I don't spend a lot of time researching to tell you which ones are the best ones. <laughs> you have like four old data devices that you pulled for that. Yes. You know, old data devices would be a good one too. Uh, your videos next CPNG have been a, uh, a lifesaver. Me figuring out our migration. Sorry for so many questions in the stream. Hey, no problem. I like this is what I'm here to do is answer questions. That's why it says, you know, live tech Q&A. <laughs> Decommissioned data is true, Nash. You know, now you guys got me curious. Um, is how many, is there some... Dado boxes out there. There's probably, yeah, there's a couple, not many. Um, interesting. So the answer is kind of, uh, yes, you can find old Dado boxes on eBay. But better than that, if, um, cert, there's, what is that company called? I'll find it real quick for the eBay search. Unix surplus. They have, you can get a lot of good deals from Unix surplus on eBay. Uh, if you type in like free NAS as a search term, they have servers that are, uh, you know, just decommissioned super micros. They have lots of them. Uh, get some drives, get a server, and you can have a decommissioned server that you can load true NAS on with a bunch of drive base. So yeah, and I bought these before for uh, certain situations. We've picked them up and they work great. I, I actually have no complaint. Uh, Unix surplus seems like a good group of people. They, um, I don't know if they still do it. They used to have a YouTube channel where they talked about some of the server stuff. I thought they did a good job on a YouTube channel. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, true NAS mini X is not a rack mount solution. Oh, you have the Mini X Plus, not the, I was thinking the uh, True NAS Mini Plus. Got it. Uh, will XCBD port a real tech deck? I was thinking about switching to Proxmox. Um, 
Yeah, I don't recommend it. Real tech sucks. I mean, will it work? Yes. Will it work good? I don't know. Uh, could be a cool video deep about security detections on Unify. Uh, there's not any really good. Their security stuff is very basic in Unify. Have just started my home labbing and made the mistake of, from the very beginning, I bought 10-inch network cabinet. Um, yeah, already full after one month. Yes, yes. You, you Even I made a mistake, and I should have known better. I put a rack in. I didn't put a full height rack. I'm like, I'll never fill up a full height rack at my studio. And then I did. <laughs> now I got too much stuff again. Yeah, this is one thing for sure. And this is why I think the Ugreen product, if it's easy to set up TrueNAS on, will be popular because those servers devour energy is a great way to put it. Uh, all my own enterprise gear idles at 150 watts. And yeah, and if you're somewhere that has a higher cost of electricity, that's going to mean that server has a high total cost of ownership over time. And these smaller NASAs with a lighter weight power supply are going to be better. I feel like Tom repeats all his answers in every live stream. Not all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> Many of my live streams, these the, some people do come and ask new questions. There's always questions about XCPNG. Oh, man, fun stuff. Well, I do in just a few minutes have to go because I'm going to do another live stream. And I said I would bring it up here. So let me um, pull this up for all of you. So I'm going to share it again here. This is the next live stream I'll be at. And this live stream is focused on Unify stuff. So that is uh, all going to be, I'm sharing it here. I think it should be a clickable link so you guys can find it. I put it in the description. I made this as findable, I believe, as possible. Um, yeah, in 16 minutes, that one starts. Which means I have to be off this one within that time. Uh, let's see. Uh, any rest interaction with Unify? Just got the PDU Pro looking for ways to control the switches. Um, I wish they would open up their API more, so I think that'd be great. Um yeah, that would be um, better. Like, I, I would like a better integration for API stuff. But once again, I don't think that was much as much on a roadmap. But I'm going to drop this here so I can uh, connect with my friends because we got to get started on the next live stream. So that link I just posted, it's in the description. If you want to ask all the Unify questions, it is focused on Unify. Uh, so that is our focus we're going to have on it. We're going to have a few of us on that uh, on that live stream uh, talking about Unify products. And I'm excited about it because, you know, these are people I got to uh, interact with on a face-to-face. -face. And many of you, some of you posting here, I was really cool meeting all of you. I love meeting people in person. I stayed at the lobby bar both days. Uh, well, the second one was later. I stayed all the way till midnight in the lobby bar talking to people. So I just didn't... The, the they brought the the bar closed at eleven. I wasn't really drinking, but they raised the lights and they're like, "Bye, people." The lobby is well, you. They'll let you sit in a hotel lobby for an indefinite amount of time, but they're kind of like the lights are on. You should go up to your rooms. <laughs> but uh, yeah, join join me at that next live stream where we're going to talk more Unify stuff. I'm definitely excited. Maybe maybe I'll adopt this in between. I'll I'll, I'll cut the box open and uh, then I'll have more stuff to talk about. Woohoo! Exciting. All right. Thanks, everyone.